Hey there, I'm Professor McBride, labor nurse, OB instructor, and your guide to everything OB. Let's get to it. The bones in a newborn's head are not fused together. This allows them to shift and move and to mold to fit through the birth canal. They come together to create suture lines and fontanelles that we can see like this on the top of this baby's head. The fontanelles and suture lines can serve as a guide for things that we might see that are normal or abnormal that's happening with our baby. So we might be able to get a sense if our baby may be dehydrated or have increased cranial pressure. We can assess molding and overriding sutures. We can assess caput suscadaneum and cephalohematomas. With molding and overriding sutures, this is an abnormal shape that happens to the head based on the pressure as the head is coming through the birth canal. So this is where those bones are able to move and shift and it creates this cone-like elongated look. We might also see overriding sutures that happen with this as well. This is going to resolve within a few days without any intervention. If our baby has overriding sutures, the bones have actually shifted to where one might overlap the other a little bit and create a ridge. Again, this is normal and not concerning. With Caput, we find a soft puffy swelling on the head and it's kind of spongy and it's gonna be at the presenting part. So typically at the occiput where the head was coming through the birth canal. So in addition to having the elongated look, then it has that spongy appearance and it is going to be superficial because it's just an accumulation of fluid like edema and it is going to cross the suture lines and, like, and it's gonna be like a cap. This may be more significant if there was a longer second stage. So if mom was pushing for a long time, there's more pressure on the head for longer so we might see more caput. Also possible to see an increase in caput with a vacuum delivery because of the pressure from the vacuum. Again, this is superficial. It crosses the suture lines. It's going to resolve within a few days and it's harmless and does not require intervention. Cephalohematomas are a bigger issue. Cephalo being head and hematoma being a collection of blood. With this, the blood is accumulated under the periosteum. So with this, it's not going to be able to cross the suture line. And this is also blood instead of fluid. So this is going to be more common with a difficult birth. We're going to need to monitor these babies for increasing size. This is not going to cross the suture line. So you can see like in this picture where it stops and you can just see where the pocket is. We're going to monitor if the size is increasing and we're going to be mindful that our baby could have an increased risk of jaundice because that the blood that's accumulating there is going to have to be broken down by the body and it's going to release bilirubin. So when we look at locations where we can see fluid or blood accumulate, you can see that the caput is superficial at the very top. The cephalohematoma is under the periosteum. There's another condition called a subgaleal hemorrhage, which is much more rare. And mostly the things that we might assess with this will be related to bruising and signs of hypovolemia for our baby because there's more blood that's accumulating in that. So conditions that we might see in addition to the ones that we've already viewed. If the fontanelle is sunken in, that can give us an indication that our baby may be dehydrated. Where if the fontanelle is bulging, that can be an indication of increased cranial pressure. With hydrocephalus, it can cause the sutures to separate. And then with the subgaleal hemorrhage, this is a more widespread issue where we can see bruising and signs of hypovolemia. So to review, the bones of the newborn's head are not fused, so this creates suture lines and fontanelles. Molding causes the head to be elongated due to pressure in the birth canal as the baby is being born. This can also cause overriding sutures where the bones overlap along with the molding. Caput is a superficial swelling due to pressure. 
This crosses the suture line and it does not require intervention. Cephalohematomas are an accumulation of blood below the periosteum. This does not cross the suture line and these babies need close monitoring to make sure that this isn't getting larger and to also watch for jaundice. Other things we can determine by looking at our baby's head could be dehydration, increased cranial pressure, hydrocephalus, and very rarely a subgaleal hemorrhage. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share for new videos every week about everything OB. See you soon.